Hey guys, so today we're going to be making a uh, simple procedural animation uh, just using a couple basic nodes and uh, some Bezier curves. Yeah, we'll just get, we'll just get right into it. So the new, don't save, delete the basic seed, add a plane and go into geometry nodes, new, delete the group output, but we're going to add a new B sphere. I'm going to put this to 9, and for now we're just going to leave that at 32. Okay, so we want to displace the uh, points on the, the sphere. So we need a set position node. And uh, now we want to actually instance uh, points on these vertices. Instance on points node. Now we need something to actually instance on these points. So we're going to add an icosphere. Okay, now we want to just scale these down to a decent size. So we can put it at 0 0.006. That's going to give us our kind of point sphere. I'm also going to add a set material whilst I'm here to the basic material. And I'm also going to go up here into the shader editor. Select the basic material of standard default material. Just delete that and add an emission. And just select that. Now we're we'll just going to equal shading, color, drop it down to zero. We need to actually give a function to this position node here to actually displace it. So what we want to do is add a vector rotate node, plug that in there, set this to Euler, and we want to give the normal information to the vector. That's going to bring it back. So we want to separate the x, y, z. So it's only affecting the x value. So we're going to add a combine and separate x, y, z. Then just plug that into the x. Plug that into the rotation. And we're just going to plug this into here as well. And now we can see we're getting that displacement. To get a bit more control of this displacement, I'm going to add a math node. And I'm going to put that in the middle. And also give it a multiply and, and set it to minus one. Now we can see we've got our basic kind of displacement. If you like this, if you're liking kind of the amount of points, uh, you know, stick with that. It's completely your decision. I'm going to set it to 6,000. Uh, I would recommend saving at this point because it can get quite intense on your GPU if you're uh, you haven't got a, a decent enough computer to handle it so anyway set that to 6000 that basically gives us a kind of a line drawing of the actual verbs if you will and if we zoom in we can obviously see there's just a lot of points here but it is indistinguishable when you when you're rasterizing it with a, with a camera um, at this level so yeah uh, we also want to add a camera, so we're going to go into the 3D viewport. We're going to add a camera. Hit G, Y, just bring that back. And here we can select the camera and just set that to orthographic. Pull it in a bit. Bring that in for 1920, and we're going to pull that back in. To about there. Select. Select our sphere. And we've got our basic setup. So we need to animate it now. So we're going to hit I or multiply. And go to 125. And type in 1.5. Hit I again. Go all the way to the end and set that to minus one and hit by. So we've got our standard. We've got a simple animation going in the moment and now we want to actually transform this to give it a bit more movement. So we can go to our object properties, set these to minus 90, minus 90, hit I. Go to the end of the time room and we can set this to 360 and to 270. Hit I again. 
So we're going to go up to our graph editor now. We can pull this away. And we need to select our object. Pull this out. We can hide the X. So a Y value. I am going to right click on that. Set the interpolation to linear. I'm going to select the Z values and set the interpolation to cubic. But before I do that, I'm actually going to ease in and ease out. And then I can set the interpolation to cubic. So, let's have a look at this now. So that's our basic animation. Super simple. Um, you know, we can go into our render settings and add some bloom if we'd like. Uh, we could also add a bit of depth of field on our camera if that's something that we'd like to do. This this creates quite a nice effect, I feel. Um, I just bring this up. So if I bring this in. we can get quite a nice effect here as well if we bring this up or down depending on what you like I'm going to keep it off the now um, you could also add some motion blur which also goes quite well again select your output here PNG or you could go FFmpeg and we want to set our encoding to MPEG4. I wouldn't recommend doing this personally. I'd recommend exporting as a PNG sequence and encoding it on something like a Media Encoder or After Effects Premiere, something that is going to encode it a little bit better than Blender does. But if this is what you want to do, then uh, this, you can also do it this way. Uh, I set it to lowest, essentially lossless. This one here. MPEG4 yeah. and then yeah you just want to hit render animation a few minutes to the end of the video I just want to say thank you for watching uh, I really appreciate it and I appreciate all the support that you guys are giving me uh, yeah consider subscribing liking you know all of that stuff you could consider also checking out my store it's in the description I have mock-ups uh, templates images Stuff that you can use that can elevate your work and take it to that next level. Consider checking it out. It's really good if you're a student or if you're doing a pitch for a client. Something that's really going to bring in uh, your work to the next level. Yeah, so thank you very much for watching. Hopefully I'll see you soon. Uh, subscribe.